my uh, my computer didn't say it was quite eight, uh, quite seven o'clock but um good evening i'd like to call to order the november 11th 2021 regular meeting of the city of webster groves board of zoning board of adjustment tom could you um take roll call please i can Marin mellum here bj papello here john bercy here debbie salberg here and myself, Tom Walsh. Thank you. This evening, uh, we have a number of petitions. The order of each uh, of the order of presentation will be the city staff will present testimony regarding the facts of the request. The applicant will have the opportunity to re pre present their request to the board and address questions, followed by those in favor of the application. Then though, anyone opposed to the application will have the opportunity to speak. The board will close the public session and open for board discussion and decision. The proceedings are being recorded, so please speak clearly and one at a time. We will vote on your application tonight for a decision. Approval will take four out of the five board members approval. Please try not to be redundant or repetitive in your comments. Tom, would you please read the powers relative to variances? This Hours relevant to variances. When by reason of exceptional narrowness, shallowness, or shape of a specific piece of property as of September 20, 1956, or by reason of exceptional topographical conditions or other extraordinary or exceptional situations or condition of a specific piece of property, which condition is not generally prevalent in the neighborhood, the strict application of the area regulations of this zoning code would result in particular particular and exceptional pr practical difficulties to an exceptional and undue hardship upon the owner of such property the board is hereby empowered to authorize upon an appeal relating to such property a variation from this from such strict application so as to relieve such difficulties are hardships. Thank you. Um, I know for the uh, the docket twenty three sixty three uh, relating to uh, two fifteen Portland Terrace has been withdrawn by the applicant. So while that did appear on the agenda, we will not be uh, there. Will be no dis no pre discussion or presentation of that one this evening. Uh, Tom, would you please read uh, the next read the docket, the next docket into the record? I will. Docket 2364, a petition submitted by Christopher Pike of Thomas Allen Group on behalf of Eric and Mary Costner for an application for variance from section 53.053C1 of the Zoning Code of Webster Groves. The applicant is requesting a variance of 3.26 feet from the minimum required 10 foot west side yard setback in order to, con to construct an addition located 6.74 feet from the west side lot line. The property is located at 124 Helfenstein Avenue within the A2 15,000 square foot residence district. Um, Danny, is that correct? Because what, what's on the agenda says west side lot lines, but what you've put up here has west crossed out and east uh, written in, which is the correct one. That is correct. When uh, putting together the presentation, I realized okay. I had I had written it wrong. <clears throat> okay, so, so what what was read into the record is correct. Thank you. Well, what is what is correct is is that it is the east side yard setback. Okay. That All right. So, so is this a problem for advertising? Charles, is that? I'm it? working on it. Okay. Do we want to go ahead? No, it's a side yard. It's the same application because it's a side yard setback. Okay. Um, I think we're good to go. All right. Thank you. Um, Mr. Billings, does the city have a case? Yes, Madam Chairman, if it please. Um, 
Uh, first of all, the city would move the admission into evidence, what has been uh, previously delivered to each member of the board in your packet, and which would be all the pertinent um, ordinances of the city of Webster Groves together with the application together with some zoning information. In addition to that, I would produce uh, Mr. Danny Genduza, and if he may be sworn, we will begin with his testimony. Mr. Genduza, would you please raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Please proceed. Thank you. Would you state your name for the record, please? Danny Gendusa. And you are employed by the city of Webster Groves, is that correct? Uh, yes, I am. In what capacity? As planner. What are your duties in that position? To administer and execute zoning regulations. Through your work with the city, are you familiar with the property at 124 Helfenstein Avenue? Uh, yes, I am. Is that within the city limits of Webster Groves? Yes, it is. In what zoning uh, district is that property located? It is in the A2 15,000 square foot residence district. I would direct your, your attention to the application that has been produced to the uh, Board of Adjustment. Would you explain what is the applicant's request? Uh, the applicant is requesting a variance of 3.26 feet from the minimum required 10 foot east side yard setback in order to construct an addition that would be located 6.74 feet from the east side lot line. And that is a clarification from what was advertised and on the agenda, it is the east uh, side yard setback line. The side, the uh, applicable ordinances we will be dealing with in this is the same for the east or the west side setback. Is that correct? That is correct. And what, what municipal code section is that please? Uh, it is section 53.053 uh, subsection C1 in the A2 dimensional regulations on side yard setbacks, uh, with, and it states that there shall be a side yard on each side of the building, having a width of not less than 10 feet. Uh, would you describe for the board the current conditions of this property? Uh, sure, the, um, according to St. Louis County records, the existing house was built in 1935. Um, uh, the existing house was built non-conforming. It was built too close to the east side lot line for what uh, today's zoning uh, standards would require. Um, the subject property was built 8.1 feet uh, from the east side property line, the, the furthest rear corner of their house, uh, while the code requires a 10 foot east side yard setback, uh, which is outlined in, in green on the slide above. All right. You have adequately desc uh, described the variances that are requested. Would you uh, explain the remainder of the packet, please? Uh, sure. So the applicant is um, looking to construct a <coughs> kitchen addition on the southeast uh, side of their home, uh, southeast rear side of their home. Um, they've provided the Board of Adjustment and staff with a preliminary site plan. Uh, the applicant's proposed kitchen expansion addition is identified uh, in the southeast corner in red on the slide. The applicant's uh, proposed addition would extend uh, as close as 6.74 feet from the east side lot line uh, and would encroach into the required 10 foot side yard setback. Um, here is a preliminary floor plan, which the applicant provided uh, to show their, their proposed kitchen expansion. Uh, the area that they would be expanding in the kitchen is identified in uh, shaded in red. And again, showing that that, uh, that corner, that Southeast corner of the expansion would extend into the uh, 10 foot side yard setback. Uh, are there any questions from the board? Um, since there appear to be no questions from the board, uh, is the petitioner ready? Um, is there a petitioner for docket 23? Six uh, he, yeah, he's walking to the sure. podium. 64. Okay, thank you. Could you please state your name and raise your right hand? Do you um, do you swear that the testimony you're about to give here is the truth? The truth is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Thank you very much. Please go ahead. Okay. Um, as you saw earlier, with that red highlighted area, uh, the homeowner would like to put a, a kitchen addition on the back of their house, and uh, 
we'd like to keep it flush with that side wall of the house so the kitchen floor plan is is not cut up with a little corner cut out it really made the uh kitchen odd but in addition to that with 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 the with the pie shaped lot to the back it's also going uphill and you're not really seeing that in these but the further you go back the higher the retaining wall has to be so there's a retaining wall there right now in order to get them this outdoor room plus that kitchen addition uh i'd like to keep the retaining wall where it is and get them those two structures but if i have to come in then the homeowner and I, in order to get a, a kitchen that works for a family that's, their, that's the size of their family, we have to kind of go out more. And then I'm having to remove the retaining wall and put it further into the yard and it's going to get taller. And I'm also afraid when I do that, uh, I'm going to start affecting, you know, the neighbors because it's they're very tight um, uh, around there, how they kind of all pinch in the back. So you're going to have um, possible water issues than we have to solve once we start moving that retaining wall, so. So the retaining wall is shown on the, uh, on the survey, correct, sir? Yes. Okay. And that's an existing stone wall right now. So I was trying to stay between it and the back of the house. So I wanted to, uh, so like I said, we're requesting the variance for that little pie shaped corner right there it's to keep our kitchen addition flush with the back of the house and then just pop an outdoor room on the back of that. Will there be any water issues with the addition? I'm sorry. Will there be any water issues with the addition? What are we doing about So the go civil engineer is going to have uh, water mitigation on uh, with his package. But I'm afraid if we move that wall now, now we're going to have to worry about something going on in the back. Right, yeah, I understand. That. Yeah, but I'm saying with this addition, do you expect anything? Do we have gutters? Uh, so all, we'll have the downspouts and whatnot all piping to a uh, uh, like a French drain in the front, um, and I believe he actually has that on here. Or maybe he doesn't have it just yet. But this was mainly for the variance package. But but that was what we talked about putting one of these. Um, uh, I always call them those uh, the black, big black trash cans with the gra gravel pit mm -hmm. where all the water just goes to them. So. so far the record, the house is currently in the easement. Correct. Our corner of it. Correct. And, and I actually found some better photographs that did not get submitted. Would, would that be something that you guys would want? This shows the rear side of the house a little better than the previous ones. So then you're just extending this portion? Yeah, so th there's that larger box bay on the back that we won't go all the way to that but the, the, the bump that's sort of uh, intermediate to that we go to that so we just flush out the corner you'll and then you'll see right on uh this sheet here in your packet that neighbor to that side signed this set saying that they were okay with the uh with this uh proposal and for the record who is the neighbor it is, uh, I was uh, Bearden. It's uh, Brian and Ann Bearden. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And they're at 114 Health and Steam. I'm sorry, you said that they, that they were accept, uh, that this was acceptable to them. They yeah, didn't have they, a problem with it. Yeah, they signed the drawings uh, saying that they oh, were okay. okay with okay. it. Okay, I saw that someone had signed the drawings. Yeah, Thank you. Brian and Ann Bearden at 114 Health and Steam. Okay. And that is to which direction of the house? That is the east side, the side that we are building onto. Yes. Perfect. And and when you call this an outdoor room, is that basically a, a patio? It will it, but it yes. it doesn't it do, it doesn't encroach into the setback, so it really doesn't matter if it's covered or not. But right. Except, yeah, so that does not encroach, but that is a patio with a cover on it, and a, it's like a fireplace uh, on the one side. And uh, this, we extended the, well, actually, we had to remove the, with this design, we had to remove the concrete staircase to the basement, so we had to relocate that. 
that is uh, not something we have to worry about as far as encroachment, according to the uh, uh, zoning code for the Webster Groves. But, um, but you'll see that staircase to the east of the fireplace, the outdoor room. So, and, so that's uh, basically a down staircase, correct? Correct. It's, it's below grade. Thank you. Uh huh. Does anyone um, else, uh, any other board members have any questions for the petitioner? No. No. Okay, I guess uh, we can um, go into executive session for docket 2364. You can sit down, sir, if you'd like. Thank you. Does anyone want to start the discussion? Do we need to see if anybody proposed? Again? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Is there anyone else in favor of docket 2364? See none. Is there anyone in opposition to DACA 2364? I see no hands raised. Thank you very much. Since there appear to be no other speakers, now we'll close the uh, public session and move into, into board discussion of 2364. Seems a classic exceptional narrowness, shallowness, shape of a specific lot. <laughs> yeah, and they're, and they're not making it wider. I mean, they are encroaching a little more into the, into the side yard, but as, a, as BJ said, this is pretty, I believe it was BJ, this is pretty classic um, odd shaped lot and, and positioning of the house. Yeah, I would agree. I think uh, this this meets the nest the nest necessary uh, guidelines to approve. And uh, well, I might just add what I said earlier: the house is already in the uh, in the side yard setback, um, and I do think too, due to the fact that the lot goes up and back, I don't see any place else they could add a, or add on to the kitchen. It seems pretty logical to do what they're doing. So I'm inclined to favor. And if I may, Madam Chairman, I would like to make a motion to approve the um, docket item 2364's request for a side yard variance of 3.26. I second. Thank you. Uh, there's no, is there any other uh, board discussion? If not, um, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? <clears throat> uh, Tom, could you please poll the commission? Baron Mellum? Aye. BJ Papello? Aye. John Bercy? Aye. Debbie Salberg? Aye. Tom Walsh, aye. Your request has been approved. You can um, contact staff during regular business hours for, for your next steps. Um, Tom, could you please read the next docket into the record? I can. This is docket 2365, a petition submitted by Michael Blaze on behalf of Bruce and Millicent Eckert for an application or variance from sections 53.203A, 53.203A1, 53.203A3 of the Zoning Code of Webster Groves. The applicant is requesting one variance of 25.8% from the minimum required 40% of existing single family dwellings, which must already have a front entry garage on the subject properties block in order to construct a new front entry garage facing Newport Avenue, where 14.3 of existing single family dwellings have a front entry garage. The applicants requesting a second variance of 6.39 feet in excess of the maximum allowable garage width of 29.61 feet in order to construct a front entry garage with a width of 36 feet. The applicant is requesting a third variance of 40.6 feet in excess of the maximum allowable projection of 
six feet in order to construct a front entry garage projecting 46.6 feet in front of the remainder of the north front elevation of the drawing. The applicant is requesting a fourth variance in order to not construct an architecturally integrated front porch across the remainder of the north front elevation of the dwelling, which is required when a front entry garage projects four feet or more beyond the remainder of the front elevation of the dwelling. The property is located at 471 Hawthorne within the A1 20,000 square foot resident district. Thank you. Does the city have a case? Yes, Madam Chairman. <clears throat> we would present the testimony initially of Danny Genduza, <clears throat> excuse me, who has already been sworn. And first I would ask the uh, chair to uh, admit into evidence those items that have been marked and have been delivered to each of the board uh, of adjustment today. And that would be uh, incorporated as part of the city's case. In addition to those documents, that have been offered and received by the city. Um, we would offer the testimony of city planner Danny Jendusa. For this record, would you state your name, please? Uh, my name is Danny Jendusa. And you are employed by Webster Groves, is that correct? Yes. You are employed as a planner for Webster Groves, is that correct? Yes, it is. And would you describe to the commission your duties in that position, please? Uh, to administer and execute zoning regulation. Through your work with the city, would you, uh, are you familiar with the property at 471 Hawthorne? Uh, yes, I am. That is within the city uh, city limits of uh, Webster Groves, is that correct? Uh, correct. And what zoning district is this particular property? It is in the A1 20,000 square foot residence district. And um, in as short a fashion as you can, would you describe the variances that are being sought by this application for the board? Um, sure, so in simple terms, they are asking for four variances uh, related to the addition of a um, attached garage on the north front elevation of the property. Uh, the first one relates to, you know, whether or not a front entry garage is allowed at all. Uh, the second is uh, related to uh, the maximum width allowed of a attached garage um, in the city's design uh, requirements. Uh, then there's a third variance related to the maximum projection of the garage in front of the rest of the elevation of the house. The fourth uh, variance is, is um, related to the applicant's uh, wish not to uh, construct a front porch across the rest of the front north front elevation of the house, which is required if a front entry garage is going to project a certain number of feet beyond the uh, rest of the house. And what municipal code sections apply to these variance requests? Um, there are a few different uh, code sections in section 53.203A in the front entry attached garage regulations. Um, the first section states that uh, front entry garages are allowed if 40% or more of the single family dwellings on both sides of the street already have front entry garages. Uh, the second subsection uh, provides a maximum width of uh, no more than 42% of the front elevation. Um, if, uh, if in this case, um, the house is wider than 44 feet. Uh, the third section relates to uh, the front projection of the garage that it cannot uh, exceed a maximum of, of six foot projection beyond the house. Uh, and that if the projection will exceed four feet, it's required to have the uh, front porch across the uh, uh, front elevation. Would you describe for the board, please, the existing conditions on this property? Uh, yes. So according to St. Louis County records, the, the existing house was built in 1908. Um, the existing detached garage on the property uh, in the north front yard was built in 1920. Um, it is uh, the house and existing detached garage are fully compliant with the uh, zoning code regulations. Um, and that is the existing conditions of the property. And will you explain the variance requested herein? Uh, sure. So here's a slide uh, image of the applicant's proposed site plan. 
Um, the applicant is proposing to uh, construct a addition on the north front elevation of their home, uh, which would include a front entry attached garage. Um, the garage would uh, open its doors towards Newport Avenue. This is a double frontage lot. Um, so it, it faces both uh, Newport Avenue um, and Hawthorne Avenue. Uh, the city code, uh, you know, designates that as being a secondary front yard. Uh, and uh, the front yard, or I'm sorry, the, the front entry garage regulations apply equally to uh, both frontages of the property. So um, uh, any front entry attached garage facing Newport Avenue is only allowed if 40% of the homes on the block also have front entry attached garages facing Newport Avenue. Uh, only three of the 21 do, um, and the code would require nine of the 21 to already have them to allow a, a new front entry attached garage on that block. Um, the zoning code would allow a detached garage that uh, fronted Newport Avenue um, within the green marked buildable area on the lot um, that, and it would not require uh, any variance to allow a detached garage uh, facing and fronting Newport Avenue. Um, another option that the applicant uh, could consider would be doing a side entry garage. Um, if the doors were to face uh, either side of the property, it would not require the, at least the first variance uh, related to the uh, 40% uh, requirement for new front entry garages. Uh, if a front entry attached garage is approved by the board, it would still have to meet the design regulations that apply to front entry attached garages. Uh, the first of which is uh, related to the maximum width allowed of a front entry attached garage. The applicant's uh, garage would be 36 feet wide uh, as identified on their site plan um, with a maximum uh, or with a, a total house width, uh, elevation width from the north at uh, approximately 70.5 feet. Um, the code says you could have a, the garage could have a maximum width of only 40, 42% of that total elevation. So that would have a maximum width of 29.61 feet uh, related to that 70.5 uh, total width elevation. Uh, the applicant's garage would also project 40.6 feet in front of the uh, rest, or the, the uh, main front elevation uh, of the house. Uh, the code only allows a maximum projection of six feet uh, for a front entry attached garage in front of the rest of the elevation of the home. Uh, the code also says that if, if the front entry attached garage will project more than four feet, uh, it's required to have a, um, a, an architecturally integrated front porch along the rest of that front elevation. Uh, the applicant uh, is uh, not seeking to construct that front porch across that elevation. Um, are there any questions from the board? I think I do. Okay. <laughs> um, do. There are a couple of garages that actually face Newport. These lots go from all the way through from, yes. from uh, the, um, the uh, Hawthorne, I think it is addressed to, uh, to uh, Newport, right? Correct. And there are two houses that do have garages there, I see. I didn't realize that. But it, so they're way short. So I, the other question I have is, and maybe it's more to the applicant, is about the not building the uh, porch. Of the, so we have that on our records that normally we're looking at a house that has a garage facing the street with the front of the house. So we're requested to make a decision based on these different types of conditions because there's really two front yards. Right? Uh, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I'm yes. sort of mumbling along here, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to get some of this in my mind. Sure.
So this is front facing towards Hawthorne, correct? Yeah. Uh, it is front facing towards Newport. Oh. But the home faces. The home faces so, Hawthorne. Yes, yes. Yeah. The, the traditional, yes, primary front elevation of the house is facing Hawthorne. Um, it's, it's the back of the house that's facing Newport. But and, the lot is seen as having double frontages right, right. on correct. both sides. True, correct. And all the houses, including 471 Hawthorne, are closer to Hawthorne than they are to Newport. Uh, for the most part, yes. Yeah, I believe. Because if you drive along Newport, you don't really see too much in the summer because there's trees and bushes and yeah I, I think all of them are oriented towards Hawthorne yeah and that's where we're talking about where the garage would go facing Hawthorne, Hawthorne. Uh, no 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 it'd be facing Newport The house itself is closer to Hawthorne than it is to Newport, as is, as are all the houses along there, I believe. I'm out of questions. <laughs> I, I lost my connection for a little bit. Um, we haven't had the, the petitioner hasn't spoken yet, right? No, they have not. Correct. I have some questions, but they're mostly for the petitioner. Are we ready for, for Mr. Blaze? Um, sure. Uh, before uh, Mike comes up to the podium, he sent me some photos um, yesterday to, to have available for his presentation. In the rush, I, I forgot to put them on the, the drive. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'll, you know, Mike can come up to the podium. I'll run down real quick and grab those to uh, be able to put those on the screen for you guys. Okay, you thank you. Quick recess. Um, uh, up to you, Mike. Would you want us to take a break before you come or? Uh, we can go ahead. We can do these. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I will run down then uh, now and. Um. Be right back. Uh, Mike said to feel free to go ahead. Okay. Um, who is who's here this evening for docket twenty three sixty five? Michael Blaze. Uh, please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you very much. Please go ahead. Um, my clients uh, have lived in this part of Webster Park in this home for roughly 25 years. And um, they want to age in place there and build a, uh, they've been dealing with a tiny little garage, basically keep all their um, lawn equipment in. And um, so they'd like to get their cars indoors. So the garage we're proposing is two cars plus area for yard equipment storage and a stair to the first floor. This garage is going to be at basement level. And then you'll, you'll pull in from Newport directly into the garage and take, take a set of stairs up to the, the, the new addition above that, which will get you to the first floor. And the new addition is going to include a new master suite. So if I, if I can stop you there. So you're coming from Newport. Are we building a driveway then? Yes. Yes, it'll be a new drive from Newport. And what kind of driveway? Uh, I don't think that has it's it's um, I don't think that's been decided yet. But it will either be uh, at a minimum either asphalt or concrete. Um, the um, so so basically, what we're proposing can be built without a variance, except for the fact that we are considering this garage front facing since it faces Newport. Now, the front of the house facing Hawthorne is 75 feet away from Hawthorne. The front face of this new garage will be a, almost twice that, 140 feet from Newport. Uh, so it's, it's fairly far back. Uh, we don't think it's gonna have much of an impact. The fact that 
This is also a historic home and historic district and it is contributing. This is the best way for us to create a detached or an attached garage without impacting the original house. It really meticulously kept the original house in very nice shape. Um, and, and that's our that's our interest is to create this um, garage facing Newport, number one, so that we don't have to impact the neighbor to the east as much. If we do a side entry, the, the neighbor on the east will basically um, be, will be right up against their property with the drive. Uh, so we'll have to be concerned about water. We'll have to be concerned about retaining walls. It's, it's a much more complicated and much more impactful um, solution. We, so we have looked at that, but it just doesn't work as cleanly. And, and, it, and this solution we believe is less impact for the neighbor and less impervious surfaces that will. Um, so my concern is this kind of drastically changes the characteristic of all of the neighbor's houses. Uh, so it doesn't exactly fit in. If that makes sense. In that, and that you're coming off of Newport where everything's facing Hawth Hawthorne. Well, so I guess that's my point. We don't need a variance to come off of Newport. So we, with, we don't have to come before the board to put a driveway from Newport to the back of this house. We do need a variance to face the garage toward that driveway that's coming from Newport. That doesn't exactly address what I was concerned with. Um, I, I guess my point being is if we don't get our variance today, we'll, we're still going to build a structure with access from Newport. So regardless of how the, the board rules today or tonight, we'll, we will build that structure. And if, if we have to, it'll be much more expensive, much more impactful on the neighbor. Uh, and we'd, we'd like, not like to have to do that. I, explain the second variance that you're seeking here. Well, because it's considered a front entry garage, um, the, the, first of all, in, in my opinion, this is in spirit with the original ordinance because the original ordinance was intentionally meant to keep um, typically developers from building what they were calling snout house garages, where the front of the house was 20 feet back behind a garage that stuck out. And, and most of these were the front of the house, were with the front door. This is the back door and we're actually connecting to a, um, to a porch that's already there, that's, that actually comes back and sticks out from the back elevation. Now, so, so the ordinance says that we, we can only build a front entry garage so wide based on how wide the house is. And that's what the second one is. Um, but correct me if I'm wrong. That, that is correct. Okay, so let me repeat. This house is wider. Typically he's saying, the front entry garage is limited in width because in relation to the rest of the the, the width of the rest of the structure. Correct. And this structure is wider, but he's still requesting a variance. You wanna make it 36, you wanna make the garage 36 feet wide, is that? Correct. We have we have we only have a two a double garage doors, and then we've got a man door. Yeah. Um, now, if you saw our, that, this is. Yeah, so you're going to have a double elevation. car garage door, but the garage is going to be larger than, wider than that than the door. It it will not be wider than the building. So that's the garage addition. This is the actual garage is just a doors is just a double garage door, sixteen foot wide. The, the addition is wider is over is yeah Danny this might be a good time for those pictures. So 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 Mike are you saying that the 
garage size is there's a second level above the garage is that correct yes there is in fact, and that's uh, the that's what's going to be 36 wide the garage and if it didn't have this second story might be narrower i mean because if um, it's a two-car garage even with some storage on the side you don't necessarily have to have 36 foot wide correct correct uh, well in order to get in order to get storage for a riding lawnmower it's a very large yard um and and yard tools uh, you need more than yeah that's so that's where the 30 we also are putting a stair in so you can pull into the garage and go directly into the home rather than having to um exit the garage and, and walk in the house um, so if i'm looking at this right is that like a like an apartment up top or would Yes, yes, it is. It's basically the, the master suite and, uh, and a living area. Okay. So it'd actually be part of the home. Now, something that Danny also pointed out is we could build a three car garage facing Newport if we move this 10 feet away from the house, roughly. So if we move it 10 feet closer to Newport, we can basically build. We can't build as much up above, but we can build a three-car garage facing Newport with the same doors. In other words, that lower level, and then we can do 50% 50, 50 above that as long as we stay within our square footages. So that's all part of it. The garage ordinance is very complex, obviously. So, so Mike, what's on the screen now um, that that I'm looking at? Is this is this the the facade of the house from Newport? Yes, it is. So that's with, actually with the addition of the okay. back of the house. Yes. Okay. So that's that is not the front door. In fact, that the, these were the original drawings from the architect, and the scribbles on that door is because there was never a door put there. Okay. Yeah. But the, but this is from Newport, not from Hawthorne. Correct. So okay. this is considered the rear elevation on the architect's drawings. And that appears to answer one of my questions. So the um, the port port crochet on the um uh, that is, is still going to remain in that driveway from hawthorne yes, is going to actually, remain as well and actually that was never built so okay port, so there's no port not it's Correct. not covered but but the is the driveway on uh from new from hawthorne going to remain yes yes okay. it will and it sits it'll sit a full level above a full story above the other there is a retaining wall that comes down and the and the the yard is terraced back from from that level. It drops considerably to Newport. So right right now you can drive from Hawthorne back to the uh, to the little garage in the back, little detached garage in the back. But Correct. will you be able to? Are they going to remove some of that asphalt paving in that area? Um, Yes, the idea was actually to turn that into green space so that they'd have a yard direct and gardens directly behind the, the house rather than, okay. than having a asphalt everywhere. All right, thank you. And um, do you want to address the issue of the, um, the front porch variance as well? Yes, again, that, that pretty much all comes from the fact that this is be considered, being considered a um, a front entry garage uh, and the porch in the spirit of the ordinance was there to reduce the impact of that garage on the front of the house. Um, the fact that this is on the back of the house, it doesn't make a lot of sense to create a porch. Um, it, it doesn't really architecturally work with the house, particularly since we're, our garage is at a, a full story below uh, the first floor. So it's at a basement level, not at a um, first floor level. It's now is, um, okay, so, so you've, you've noted, uh, and I don't mean to be putting words into your mouth, but you've noted that adding a porch onto this historic home might be um, problematic because it wouldn't necessarily, this style of house did not have a porch initially? Uh, correct. Well, the originally there were no, all this 
the house had originally was, was a design for a porco share and then there's an open porch on the opposite side, but it did not have a front porch. And the fact that we're so far back from the original home with this garage, the porch doesn't really work architecturally. Are there, um, are there issues with the slope of the lot? I mean, I mean, how are you doing the, the basement entry garage? Is, is this gonna have to be excavated or what? Um, the area directly beneath, yes, the area beneath where the garage is being built will be excavated. Uh, basically we end up coming out pretty much to where grade is currently uh, for the driveway. So at, at the same elevation, the existing garage is at approximately? The existing garage is about three and a half feet below the first floor level. This will be nine feet below, nine and a half feet below the first New, floor Newport level. is considerably lower. Yes, it is. So there's okay. a hill from Newport, a gradual hill that goes up toward this residence, correct? Yes, yes there is. Yeah, so that's okay. why you're gonna going to put the garage at one level and the addition at the second level. Correct. Yeah, you just be sort of cutting into that hill. And architecturally, we feel that the, the, the garage face is much more appealing than the, a side of a garage. So if we don't get a variance, we'll build a garage and face it toward the neighbors um, and put maybe a couple windows in that in that elevation rather than having much more interesting um, architectural elevation. But this has not gone before the architectural review board yet, correct? No, it hasn't, no. Okay. Thank you. you. You mentioned looking at having the garage face east, if, if I understood you correctly. Yes. Is there any, uh, did you look at it, the potential of it facing west? In the same orientation as the existing garage. If we if we were to build the garage without the variance, we would face it east because the um, the terrain works better for us. The neighbors actually have um, have a basement level garage as well. So to give you an idea how that grade actually works, we'd we'd have to have some retaining walls up toward the neighbor, um, say on the that house base of the garage, and then it'd be it'd be more exposed on the back. Um, the there there is enough room on that side. It just uh, again we feel it is much more impact, impactful on the neighbor, and um, then it also requires much more pavement. To create that and and retaining walls, has the neighbor signed off on? Uh, I'm going to let the homeowner uh, speak to that. All right. I, I believe there is an issue about. I think that house may be for sale, and there I don't think there is a neighbor right now. I, I'll let her speak to that. I'm, there has been one for sale along there. I know that. Before we yeah. ask the before we ask the homeowner to to uh, come to the podium, is there are there any other questions for Mr. Blaze at this time? I have one. If you had to sort of sum up what have been in, in, in designing this project, what are the greatest hardships or handicapping conditions, exceptional conditions that you feel you're facing here? Well, I would say the exceptional condition of the lot is the fact that we have two frontages, that, we're, um, that we have a front on Hawthorne and a front on Newport. That is our, that is our hardship. It's created the enforcement of a garage ordinance that was meant for the front face of the house that is being enforced on the rear face of the house. I don't. I, I do not believe that this ordinance was meant to be applied in this manner, particularly for a garage that is 140 feet old. Actually, I've got 143 and a quarter from the property line and to the street. It's even further than that. In creating the extra width of the garage, what's been the hardship there? 
What's the toughest thing you're dealing with, do you think, when you designed this? Uh, could you repeat that? Yeah, okay, you want, uh, you want one of your variances is for extra width to the garage. Yes. And I'm looking at what are the hardships, what are the exceptional conditions here that you feel you've faced to request uh, to make your request this. Um, part if of that I is, should, my, if I could add to that, I think that's a really interesting question because when you look at the proposed elevation sketch, at least when I read, we want a 36 foot wide garage, you think of 36 feet of garage door and that's not at all what you've sketched. No, it's not. It's so in other words, it's part of it is the amount of space that we're, we, we need to create living space above and, and the master suite above. So it's related to living space above two, two, right? You know, one could argue, well, these people have a pretty big lot. They could uh, build a shed for their lawnmower, et cetera. And you could build a, not build as wide a garage. Or mm -hmm. rotate the garage. Or, or possibly, yeah. I'm just trying to think this one through while you're up here. I'm, okay. I'm, yes. Uh, in fact, I'd, I'd be happy to come back if you have additional questions too, if I, have, if they, if I step away. There, if we turn that 90 degrees, we believe that the, the elevation is going to be much less um, interesting than the elevation we're showing you now. It'll be much more. Okay, what would you turn 90 degrees? What would it be? In other words, taking the whole garage and, and, and entering it from the side rather than entering sure. it from the. It, it, mm -hmm. in that if we enter from the side, then there are, there's, there's less fenestration, but windows and doors on that lower level. It's probably going to be more, mostly concrete. Are there any other homes that have, uh, I guess, driveways off of Newport? Um, I do not believe so. Not on, I'm, I don't I'm in Webster Park on Newport. Mine, except my front of my house faces Newport. My address is on Newport. Um, there is, I do not think there is one on this block. But I, I don't have, think there is either. I drive by it all the time. I, don't pay that much attention because you can't really see the houses because they're right close to the other street. But I don't think there's any garages. I don't think anybody has a driveway coming out to Newport. I'm pretty sure of it. I'll check it tomorrow, but that's too late. Um, I, th oh. I thought that the sketch that Danny showed in his presentation where he had some X's, I thought there was another house on uh, uh, with, a, with a, a garage on Summit, but- I did um, too. Is that the so other side? Uh, uh, so according, yeah, according to this slide, at least two of them on this block do have uh, driveways facing Newport. Hmm. What's that side street then? I think that is- Bond part. Bond part? Bond part, I think. Okay. I don't have any other questions. I'm good, thank you. Thank All you. right. Um, is the uh, would the homeowner like to uh, like to come to the to the podium, please? Uh, she's on her way. Thank you. Hi. Would you please? Uh, good evening. Please would state your name and raise your right hand. My name's Nolison C. Eckhart. Thank you. Uh, do you? Solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Please um, go ahead. I believe there was a question about have you talked to this, the neighbors, the affected neighbor, but. Um, that house has been for sale for almost two years and it hasn't closed yet. So there's nobody there. As a matter of fact, um, we felt like we, they have a dead tree and we felt like it was on a property, right on the property line. We weren't sure whose it was. We couldn't get a hold of them. So we took the tree down. 
and uh, had it cleaned up. So if you feel comfortable, you can pull your mask down oh, so we okay. can hear you a little better. So I don't, you know, we haven't really had much, um, uh, just can't connect with them. Uh, but as Michael said, they do have a basement garage on that side. And uh, so the, I, to answer um, Mr. Waltz's question, I think there are two, two houses on in our block maybe that have driveways coming off of um, Newport. Um, our concern was to try to, we want something connected because we're old, getting older and we don't wanna go out to get to the, our cars and we need a first floor bedroom and bath. So we thought the best thing was to do the lower level garage and um, where we, we sit pretty high up and I look at garages all along that road and they're very, they're much closer to the road than what ours will be. And um, I know that they have the ordinance or the, you know, it's okay for them to do that. So we're asking for something special, but I think ours is gonna sit so far back. And as Michael showed you the design, uh, we just felt like it just really was about the prettiest thing we could do to enhance the back of the house. The back of the house already has a, a, little, a little bit of a porch. Um, is that where they, they're calling that portico or whatever they're talking about? Mm -hmm. well, actually, uh... Yeah, but then there's that other little porch on the side. There's some French doors. In the drawing that he showed you, it looked like the original front door, but there are French doors there and there's a tiny little porch there. And to just extend that or to add more, we just think is, aesthetically not we feel like what he's done is the most aesthetic we could get so um yeah so I, let me ask you does it, so you're saying first floor so the top of the garage that's going to be your, your your that's going to be our bedroom and bathroom and i like walk straight into the house that walk that'll walk straight into the house for us but we're going to need when you were talking about the size of the garage we need a staircase to get us down to the garage. So we need, I don't know, three feet at least for that or whatever that is. Um, and then as Michael said, some room for our equipment. It is a big lot. And uh, so I don't know if there's anything else you'd like to ask me. No, thank you. I, I don't have any more questions. I thank you for coming. Tonight. Okay, thank you. thank you. Does anyone else have any more questions? Is there anyone else in favor of docket 202365 that'd like to speak. Uh, if you are in favor, please raise your hand. I see no hands. Is there anyone in opposition to docket 2365? I see no hands. Thank you. Since there appears to be no other speakers, um, I'd like to close the public session and open for board discussion. Does anyone want to make some, make a comment to get stuff started? I'll get us started. Uh, the uniqueness of the situation is two front yards. And one of the front yards is 140 some odd feet from the street, which is Newport. So that's to me the uniqueness of the lot. And let me just stop there for right now and get my thoughts together. To me, this seems a bit complicated. I'm not totally opposed to it. Um, I'm just not sure exactly what the hardship is that we're discussing. Well, I think. I think the hardship is that they have two front yards. And so in order to do an attached garage, um, a front entry attached garage, they, they need some of these variances. Um, I think it's two, they have two front yards, one of which is not actually close to them. If they were, you know, both 50 feet from the home, then I think the standards for a front yard hold, but here you've got a second front yard that they're 140 feet from. So I think the depth is. 
maybe more exceptional piece of that mm -hmm. because they have to sort of abide by the aesthetic of a front yard for a uh, position that is not a front yard. Like I'm not even sure you could see it from the road. I would also suggest that the fourth variance they've requested, the one uh, that requires a um, an, in, an architecturally integrated front porch across the um, north front elevation um, is, is sort of, um, is, is also related to the fact that, that they're so far back from the north elevation. I agree with that. And I agree with that too. It doesn't, to me, it doesn't seem practical to have a front porch because this is not a garage and front porch in a, what I guess I'll call a typical sense right? because it's the second front yard and it's far away from the street. Yep. Well, I guess that's my problem with it is it's, we're saying we have a house with two front yards and that just seems odd to me. Well, I think well, that highlights the point. That's according to the code. Right, I mean, yeah. I mean, you, it's it's you're defined as a it's a defined as a front yard when you front a street. So everybody on a corner, in in theory, has two front yards. One's, you know, a side front yard, but it doesn't change your setback from the from the roadway. Um, and this is this is very similar, is in, in that they have two front yards, and uh, some of the garage requirements are based on front entry garage. You know, so unless they turn the garage, they can't not have a front entry garage. I think too, the code, I'm gonna say probably on this garage front porch probably speaks to the fact cities generally are trying to, trying to keep a house from being dominated by the garage. At least in my previous city, that was the case. So I'm, I'm just going to guess, I'm not saying that that's probably the th thrust of this code. This is a different circumstance because it's really, all of this is really in truth facing the backyard, mm -hmm. which is on paper, a front yard. And just like Debbie said, that's the key uniqueness of this whole proposal here, our key hardship. And it seems to me that, yeah, part of the zoning code is to you know, protect the aesthetics for neighbors and yeah. people that are driving by. And this seems to not contradict that because it's not going to be seen. Um, I, I Go ahead. assume we'll take each one of these as individual motions. Yeah, right, but I, but I, but I, but I'd like to make ones, sure we talk ones. about each of them before we sure. get to the to the making a motion. Sure, sure. I I agree that having two exceptional front or two front yards would, would merit an exception. I, I'm not sure all of these merit uh, undue hardship. The second one, I think. I I agree. The second one easier. is is easier. The fourth one, having to build a front porch, uh, I think is undue hardship. So let's talk a little about the width of the garage. What's the hardship that we see there? I don't think there is a hardship. I, that's, the, that's the one I struggle with, to be honest. I understand what the petitioner is trying to do, but I am looking at what is the hardship there because you could it could be more square instead of a or, or, or it could be yes it could be deeper was what i was going to say um exactly. and they the stairway could be you know in the back of the garage rather than on the side i mean that might impact and and the man door does not have to be on the same side as the uh as the garage doors it can it can be anywhere it just you just have to have a man door is my understanding is that correct danny uh, yes, you could have a garage door facing east or west to get equipment out of. Correct. Uh, yes. 
in my opinion, if we're going to allow it, just let it go as is. <laughs> well, I mean, you, you know, the, the, the fact that they have a second story above this garage and, and they've probably designed, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying they couldn't redesign it, but, you know, it's probably designed at that 36 foot width for the, um, for the master bedroom and the, and the living area that they're adding on the back of the house as well. Yeah, I guess my only real concern is the state of the neighbor or, you know, the house has been for sale for two years and what the impact is on that property. Um, and I, I don't know if it's been really addressed. How far is it from the neighbor? 15, 15.8 um, or 15.9 feet. Thank you. And they're not requesting a, a side yard variance here. So they're putting the addition within allowable the allowable area if if they've drawn the the sketch right the the side yard is 12 feet um so yes they've met that side yard setback and yeah. then the interesting thing is the third variance request is just overall driven by the geometry of the footprint yeah. of the addition as it's drawn if it were a square footprint the need for a variance would be less. Mm -hmm. And I think that's also related to the, to the fact that it's got two front yards. Third variance. Third variance. Did we talk about that one? I feel like. Third variance of 40.6 feet in excess of the maximum allowable projection of six feet. That, seems that would be much. a really oh. shallow garage, oh, right? Six that's... feet deep. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, could we go back to Danny's sketches to, to look at to look at that variance? Oh, that's a was that the snout nose comment? Okay. Okay, so that's the snout. And we'll, no, that's it, the. It would be. It could be more if it were deeper. Who's front entry? More than forty feet. So making it wider 40. decreases that 40 or um, making the garage narrower would extend that 40.6 foot variance. This is, this is, this is, uh, no, I think this variance is based on the fact that they, they're attaching it to the back of the house and but it, pro the front of the house. and it, or the front of the house and it pro and it sticks out further than the yeah. way further than the front of the house. If that you know, unlike a. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But so once they again, there are hundred and, right. you know, 150 or more feet from the, uh, from the front yard. Yeah, I think that their distance from Newport um, dilutes the importance of this variant. Of the yeah, if you turn the house around and this was facing Hawthorne, it would you could see why. Right. You oh yeah. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. But because of the two front yards, this isn't really the backyard. Yeah. So to if, me, the second variance is the one that least so. relevant to the width, the depth of the yard, and the two front yards. So the second variance is to get the 36 foot wide garage versus th that's wider than the allowable percentage based on the house. Mm -hmm. That's the one I'm struggling with. I'm struggling with a, with a, a hardship related to that or a, a circumstance. The only circumstance I can come up with and, and I'm thinking out loud is it's related to the living area above. And then one could say, does the living area above have to be 36 feet wide? It could be 36 feet wide in the what? south direction as opposed to the yeah, west or, direction. Yeah. It can be 36 foot deep, but not necessarily 36 foot wide. Yeah. 
course, yeah, if, if, if they, yeah, if they rotated it around and it was the length was heading toward Newport, mm -hmm. I don't think that variance would be included in the packet. Danny, if we, then if we would approve some of these variances, but, but not the, uh, the 36 foot wide one, and they would end up with a different footprint that might be closer to, um, to Newport, does that mean they'd have to come back to this board for adjustment of the variances? I, I think it would, um, unless, uh, unless Charles would say you'd have the leeway to give them a uh, greater projection than 40.6 feet. I don't know that you can do that. I don't know. I don't know that we can do that based on how it was advertised, can we? No. Well, and if we did that, there, the, and they had to enter the garage from the side, it causes them some hardship on construction of a driveway, I would think. But no, I'm not, I wasn't suggesting that they required to be on the side. I think we talked earlier about rearranging the garage space. So maybe the stairway was in the back rather than along the side, you know, um, and that some of the storage area was, you know, so the, the garage was deeper rather than wider. Right. But not necessarily turn the garage, require the garage to be turned. Can someone, or I don't know if Danny, if you can answer this, the, what is the underlying objective or principle that the um, ratio between the house and the garage is trying to achieve? Like, I mean, what principle is that ordinance trying to uphold? Yeah, I, mean, I think it is, uh, Tom kind of described it earlier, uh, to ensure that a front entry garage isn't dominating, okay. you know, the visual appearance of a, of a home. I mean, if that's the case, I don't see that being at risk here again because of the... Well, it all comes back to two front yards. Right. And the depth. Of and the one, back, one front yard is a backyard and it's quite a ways away from the street. Like we said, we wouldn't turn this whole thing around and have it face Hawthorne. I mean, I'll say my biggest concern is, is changing the character of the neighborhood. If you've got two entrances and two front yards, you know, that, that aesthetically is off-putting to me, but I'm not a, extremely opposed to it. Well, I think it's a unique circumstance. That's for sure. Um, and it's an exceptional circumstance. And the lot itself is, is a good sized lot. And these houses aren't three feet from each other on this street. And there's still some side yard back there where the, where the garage and new addition would go. And the fact that the lot actually slopes down from Hawthorne to Newport. Does anybody want to make a motion? Um, I believe that we we discussed we'd need to make a motion for each one. Yes, Madam Chair, we do. I would suggest that Danny, uh, if you would put up on the screen the first variant so that everybody's on the same page then go to the second variance and the third. That would make it clearer, I think, for all, all the members of the uh, board. Today. Thank you, that's, that's a great idea. <clears throat> okay. Would anyone like to make a motion on the first variance, which in essence is the first paragraph? Well, I'll make a motion to approve the first variance request of docket item 2365. Go ahead and read that, Tom, so that uh, anyone who's listening knows what we're talking about. Uh, the, a variance of 25, wait a minute here. Am I reading the right one? 25.8% yeah. from the minimum required 40% of existing family dwellings, which must already have a front entry garage on the subject properties block in order to construct a new front entry garage facing Newport. 
where 14.2% of existing family dwellings have a front entry garage. Do we have a second? second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Uh, Tom, would you please poll the commission? Marin Mellon. Aye. B.J. Papello. Aye. John Bercy. Aye. Debbie Salberg. Aye. Tom Walls. Aye. Okay. Um, would anyone like to make a motion on the second request? Okay. I will uh, move that we approve the uh, second variance request to docket 2365, a uh, variance of 6.39 feet in excess of the maximum allowable garage width of 29.61 feet in order to construct a front entry garage with a width of 36 feet. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you. Is there any additional discussion of this second request? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. Would you please poll the commission? Marin Mellum. Aye. BJ Papello. Aye. John Bercy. No. Debbie Salberg. Aye. Tom Walls, aye. Would anyone like to make a motion on the third <laughs> request? I will move that we approve the third request of docket item 2365, a variance of 40.6 feet in excess of the maximum allowing, allowable projection of six feet in order to construct a front entry garage projecting 46.6 feet in front of the remainder of the north front elevation of the dwelling. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you. Is there any other dis any discussion before we take a vote on this third variance, third request? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Tom, would you please poll the commission? Marin Mellum. Aye. B.J. Papello. Aye. John Bercy. Aye. Debbie Salberg. Aye. And Tom Walls. Aye. And the final request. Okay, I'm going to move <laughs> that we approve the fourth variance of docket item 2365 um, in order to not construct an architecturally integrated front porch across the remainder of the north front elevation of the dwelling, which is required when a front entry garage projects four feet or more beyond the remainder of the front elevation of the dwelling. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. All in, uh, do we have any discussion on this one? Yes, I think if they're going to do it, they need to do it the whole way. Excuse me? What do you mean by that? They need to construct the porch and come in. The, there's no hardship on doing that. Okay. Expense seems to be the only reason. Any other? Any other well, comments? It comes back to two front yards. Yeah. I think if you believe in the first motion, the hardship of having two front yards, then the front porch applies to that. I disagree. I would okay. I would respectfully probably disagree, but we vote. Yep. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. Uh, would you please poll the commission? Marin Millam? Aye. B.J. Papello? Nay. John Bercy? Yay. 
Debbie Salberg. Aye. Tom Walsh, aye. Unfortunately, okay. Unfortunately, your first three variance requests have 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 been approved. The fourth one, unfortunately, has failed. You uh, Wait, may no, see no, city staff what? during regular oh, business you hours about your next step. No, like, oh, you say no, yeah or no? I, I said aye. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, John. I thought I, you said. I said uh, yay, but I meant aye. Thanks. For okay. All right. So, <laughs> so it's four. That. So the the well, fourth Ryan variance has passed they, four to one pretty, as well. So night. all of your all of your variances have been approved. You may see city staff during regular business hours about your next steps. Okay. Tom, would you please read docket 2366 into the record? Docket 2366, a petition submitted by Michael Blaze on behalf of Kirk and Stephanie O'Donnell for an application for a variance from section 53.043B2C and 53.043B2C. Point five of the zoning code of Webster Groves. The applicant is requesting one variance of 12.72 feet from the minimum required 30 foot north front yard setback in order to construct an addition located 17.28 feet from the north front lot line. The applicant is requesting a second variance of 3.85 feet from the minimum required 51.5 foot west front yard setback in order to construct an addition located 47.65 feet from the west front lot line. The property is located at 320 Park Road within the A1 20,000 foot resident district. Thank you. Does the city have a case? Yes, Madam Chairman. Uh, initially, the city would move the introduction, introduction into evidence, the exhibits that have been placed in your packet for each of the Board of Adjustment and delivered to them, and further would present the testimony of Danny Genduza. He has previously been sworn. Would you state your name for the record, please? Uh, Danny Genduza. And you are employed by Webster Groves, is that correct? Yes, I am. And you're employed as a planner for Webster Groves, is that correct? Correct. Would you describe briefly what your duties are as a planner in Webster Groves? To administer and execute zoning regulations. So your work in the city, are you familiar with the property located at 320 Park Road? Yes, I am. Is that within the city limits of Webster? Uh, yes, it is. And what zoning district is, and within the city is that property located? In the A1 20,000 square foot residence district. Would you please describe for the commissioners the zoning request that is being made by this application? Uh, yes, the applicant is requesting two variances, uh, both from front yard setbacks, uh, because this is a uh, corner lot. Um, one variance of 12.72 feet from the 30 foot north uh, required setback. So the addition would be 17.28 feet from the north front lot line. The second variance is for 3.85 feet from the required 51.5 west front yard setback to construct an addition that would be located 47.65 feet from the west front lot line. What municipal code sections apply to this request? Uh, the first variance uh, is from section 53.043 B um, to C, uh, which would, uh, because this is a wedge shaped lot, um, it would have a, a 30 foot um, front yard setback from the north uh, front property line. The second variance request is from uh, subsection B uh, five, which uh, says that a dwelling existed as of September 20th, 1956 may be enlarged, provided the addition does not extend into a required front yard setback uh, distance further than the existing house. Would you describe the conditions of the property at the present time? Uh, sure. So um, according to St. Louis County, the house was built in 1924. It is on a uh, wedge shaped lot. Um, uh, and it's also a corner lot at the intersection of Newport Avenue and Park Road. Uh, it's actually just a few houses down from the property we just looked at. Um, uh, yeah, that's about it for the uh, current conditions. Can you explain uh, for the board the variances being requested here? Um, sure. So we have a copy of the applicant's site plan before us. 
They are looking to construct a uh, addition on the north side of the uh, house. Uh, the proposed addition would extend beyond the buildable area marked in green. Uh, it would be extend closer to Park Road and closer to Newport Avenue than is allowed in the code. Um, so shown above in red uh, is marking the applicant's uh, requested uh, front setback for their uh, new addition to be uh, 47.65 feet from the from Park Road, uh, and the existing front setback line uh, is at 51.5 feet. Uh, the second, uh, or I guess it's actually the first variance is uh, to extend closer to Newport Avenue. The requested setback is marked in red at 17.28 feet from the north front lot line. And the code requirements would say that the addition would have to be at least 30 feet back from uh, Newport Avenue. Uh, here we have the applicant's uh, preliminary architectural rendering of the existing front conditions of their home. Uh, and they would like to expand that to the north to construct an addition on the, uh, the, the north elevation of their home. Uh, is there any questions that I can answer? Yeah, what's the point of the, the setback? Like, what's, what's, what's the city trying to do with that? Um, I, you know, I suppose there's, there's a number of different reasons for setbacks. You know, one is, uh, you know, primarily to uh, protect the, you know, uh, character and expectations uh, in the neighborhood. Um, on corner lots, you know, it's, it's to protect, you know, visibility uh, at intersections um, and to, uh, kind of ensure that there is some um, level of uh, some some degree of, of uniform character uh, in, in home design and placement on, on lots and neighborhoods. Thank you. Danny, Park Road it is not, uh, the Park Road frontage is not, uh, is, this is not a triangle technically because the Park Road frontage is curved. Is that correct? Uh, Correct. It is curved. So it does have a curved uh, front setback line. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions for Danny this evening uh, on this petition? Is it just curious, is the frame existing garage going to remain back? I believe so. I could let the applicant discuss that. But yes, I, I think they're looking to keep I know that's not related to the request, yeah. really. But we did find a uh, driveway on Newport. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't resist it. <laughs> Does anyone else have any questions for Mr. Jindusa? If not, who's here this evening for docket 2366? Michael Blaze. Uh, Mr. Blaze, you're still um, you're still under oath. Would you please yes. um, proceed? Um, so this, this project is um, for the client's in-laws. It's a, basically an in-law suite on a first floor level to be made accessible. Uh, originally, when the clients called me, they asked if they could convert the garage into an in-law suite. Um, so we looked at the garage, the garage is old, and I identified the fact that we'd have to get a variance to do anything to that garage because it is all it is also outside um, the buildable area. Um, I also talked to them about uh, being able to um, do something that would okay. Thank you. We could do something that could actually attach it to the house so that if the the owners wanted to get to their in laws, there could be a uh, a second floor access or just coming out the, the porch and onto the across the drive and into the um, into their apartment base or their suite. Uh, so this would be a small living area and a master suite basically is what that encompasses. Um, it, it also has the ability to be turned into a two car garage in the future should another homeowner like to do that with a rear facing um, Doors, but that that's I don't know why anybody would do that considering the amount of money they're going to spend creating a suite. But it is considered because it is at grade and it'll be an accessible addition. Uh, we looked at other areas within the buildable 
um, portion of the lot, the billable portion directly behind the house. Um, Danny, do you mind going back to the site? Oh, sure. Please. Uh, but if you see that white um, porch on the back on that last picture, um, so to the right of that, the picture, oh, the, the, the actual picture. Sorry. So that's the back on the right side here. The right side is a front porch. Okay. The left side, the white um, pergola. Gotcha. Is the back porch. We looked at putting an addition right onto the back of that, but it pretty much it would pretty much take up the entire backyard and would also eliminate the ability to get into the garage. And then we've got a grade there, right? Yes, yeah. we do. Yeah. Um, we looked at putting the addition on the opposite side of the house, which is um, closer to the neighbor and again, more impactful for the neighbor, it would take us right up to that setback, but it would not be accessible. In other words, we wouldn't have access from the drive uh, without creating a new drive of some sort or new walkways. And, but um, have, have the, having the ability to pretty much pull up directly beneath um, the roof with the house on the right, and the suite on the left is was the uh, the accessibility um, solution we came up with. Uh, so again, we figured that this is the best solution. Our hardship is the shape of the lot; that it is a pie shape, and our our lines converge on the um, on the addition. Um, the the addition is actually no closer to Newport than the, the garage. The garage is actually closer at 13 and a half feet and we're seven, over 17 feet from Newport. Um, you mentioned too that uh, this does not have a driveway on the Newport though. It, the, the site looks like it does, but uh, in fact, it, 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 there's grass between there and, the, and, and plantings but it does not access Newport. I'm sorry, is there actually a garage on this house? Yes, uh, there is a garage existing. Okay. So we're so gonna leave. Then this like drive through goes to it or? Yes, so we'll okay. drive beneath beneath the roof or it'd be like a port cochere between the two structures. Gotcha. But currently the, the driveway actually comes in from Park Road, right, at the moment? It, it goes where? I'm at the moment, the driveway comes from Park Road, it goes by so I see out there by the frame garage, it's got asphalt driveway. So that exists now. So you- get, Yes, it does. Yeah, for a second there, I thought you came off Newport, but you didn't. It, it gets close, but there's another, the part of the right of way is all, um, is all planted. It's, yeah. there's, there's a lot of privacy between the two. And they do not wish to- And the frame Newport. garage that exists now is in the, in the easement, right? Yes, it is. Yeah. I don't think that's related to what we're talking about. Now we we could we also wanted to keep the the addition square with the house. Now we could tilt it and curve it toward the you know with the to try and stay within that front setback. But we feel that this is um, the best solution rather than trying to kind of tilt that addition to one side or the other. Yeah, you could really make a heck of an architectural statement out of those setback lines, couldn't you? Just <laughs> <laughs> I think we'd have curved and pointy. <laughs> I'm just curious, is if this was approved, it looks like you'll come off Park Road, drive your car actually through the addition, if you yes, and beneath the addition, the existing yes. garage. Correct. So if you have to get a big truck back there, it might be a problem. <laughs> yeah. Can we see the sketch of the, the rendering? Uh, on. Yeah. There's a similar house like this further down park. Um, um, I guess that, that would be west on park. 
where it has, it, except it's a garage addition that had been done probably 15 years ago. Well, you think your, your, as you looked at this, your biggest hardship to get this project designed like you folks wanted it was the shape of the lot? Yes, it is. And, and there are there are some topographic issues, but this the biggest is the shape of the lot. The, the ground goes, refresh my memory, the rise goes from the from Park Road. It rises up right up the back. Yeah. Yes. And this is the beginning of that same block as uh, the last. Yeah, one. yeah, this is the, uh, yeah. Um, Mr. Blaze, and, and the fact that you have two front yards and a, and a, a triangular shaped lot and the park road curves, right? Yes. Because Newport is again, another front yard. Right. Because if it wasn't a front yard, everything would be fine. If it was a side yard, everything would be fine along the side, along the Newport yeah, frontage. Correct. Okay. And is the frame shed going to remain too? Uh, if it doesn't fall down. <laughs> no, <laughs> no okay. I think they're actually intended to take that down. I don't think Mr. Blaze is going It's not likely that. to stay. No, it's, the frame shed's probably going to go. Okay. I think the termites are eating it up pretty good. Does anyone have any any question uh, other questions for Mr. Blaze? No. Is there anyone else in who'd like to speak in favor of docket 2366? I do see the applicant on the call. Um, Mr. O'Donnell, if you'd like to speak, please um, please raise your hand. No. Uh, it doesn't look like, oh, there he is. Mm. Uh, Mr. Hi, Mr. O'Donnell. Um, could you please yeah. raise your right hand and repeat after me? I solemnly yes, swear that the testimony I'm about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I solemnly swear that the testimony I'm about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I'm sorry. Thank you very much. Please proceed. Yeah. Yeah, and I just wanted to check in and lend my support and say I appreciate everybody taking a look at this and make sure there were no questions for me. Um, this was probably a better question for Mr. Blaze. I'm assuming that this uh, port co-share is going to be big enough so that if in the future you get one of those ginormous SUVs, you won't have a problem getting in, getting through it? <laughs> I believe that's the plan, um, okay. Mr. Blaze. <laughs> and... Um, so the connect will the connection be along the second floor um, to get to the to the uh, what's on the on the other side of the of the driveway in the new addition? I believe so. Porta Cachet is is how we kind of talked about it. Um, right. Mr. Blaze may also be better uh, able to answer that, but you know we're looking for a covered way to pass from one side to the other. And then obviously it would, this addition would have a, a man door at the main level, at the ground level to get out of that area as well, I right? I believe so. Okay. Anyone else have any questions for Mr. O'Donnell? None for me. None here. No. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, Happy Veterans Day. Thank you. Is there anyone else in favor of Docket 2366? Is there anyone who's opposed to docket 2366? I see none. Okay. Um, then we, uh, I guess we'll move to um, board discussion of docket 2366. Yes, I think there's a, a definitely an issue with the, the twisting of the lot. And I think this is a uh, this is an undue burden on them and it would be helpful um, and helpful to the neighborhood even. 
I think we've stated that the corner lot triangular shape and the curvature of Park Road adds to hardship and difficulty for putting addition on this lot. I agree. And, and I believe that the, uh, the slope of the lot does impact the, uh, the options that they have for an addition as well, correct? Correct, in my opinion. Same here. A lot of times we worry about an addition and what the neighbors will think, well, this is away from the neighbors. And the addition is really along Newport Avenue. And there's some shrubs along there, if my memory serves me correct. And some shrubs? Shrubs or bushes or something that blocks the view. You... Yeah. Well, it's a lovely proposal. I mean, I, well, and, yeah, and no, we're not and judging my... the architectural merits of it, but it's right. a cool addition. Yeah, I like the look of it for sure. And regarding the landscaping, my guess is once they build the addition, they'll also want to uh, increase planting if necessary in that area for uh, increased privacy. Would any, I, we, pro, we need to take these, uh, this is two, two variance requests as well, correct, Mr. Billing, Mr. Billings? Yeah. You okay. Individually, please. Well, uh, I would like to make a motion that we approve the first variance requested for docket item 2366. A variance of 12.72 feet from the minimum required 30 foot front north north front yard setback in order to construct an addition located 17.28 feet from the north front lot line. Second. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Tom, would you please poll the commission? Marin Mellum. Aye. BJ Papello. Aye. John Bercy. Aye. Debbie Stahlberg. Aye. And Tom Walsh, aye. Do we have a, a motion for the second variance request? A motion that we grant a second variance request of the 3.85 feet from the minimum required 51.5 foot west front yard setback in order to construct an addition located 47.65 feet from the west front lot line. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Would you please poll the commission? Marin Mellum? Aye. B.J. Papello? Aye. John Bercy? Aye. Debbie Salberg? Aye. Tom Walsh? Aye. Your variance has requests have been approved. Please, you may see city staff during regular business hours about your next steps. Tom, would you please read docket 2367 into the record? Docket 2367, a petition submitted by Michael Blaze on behalf of Jason and Catherine Wiggins for an application for variance from sections 53 Point oh seven three B dot two dot B of the zoning code of Webster Rose. The applicant is requesting a variance of thirteen point five four feet from the minimum required thirty foot north front yard setback in order to construct an addition located sixteen point four six feet from the north front property line. Property is located at three sixty. Hillside Avenue within the A4 7,500 square foot resident district. Thank you. Does the city have a case? Yes, ma'am. Chairman, first we would move introduction of evidence which has been previously delivered to the board in your packet, which outlines uh, the various documents uh, pertinent to this application. In addition to those documents that have been introduced into evidence, we present the te testimony of Danny Genduza. Would you please state your name since you have already been sworn? Uh, yes, my name is Danny Genduza. And you are employed by Webster Groves, is that correct? Yes. And you're a planner, is that correct? Correct. 
and your duties are to administer and execute zoning regulations. Is that correct? Correct. So you work with the city. Are you familiar with the property located 360 Hillside Avenue? Uh, yes, I am. Is that within the city limits of Webster Groves? Yes, it is. And what is the zoning uh, applicable to this property? It's uh, zoned A4, 7,500 square foot uh, residence district. What is the applicant's request? Uh, the applicant is requesting a variance of 13.54 feet from the minimum required 30 foot north front yard setback in order to construct an addition that is, would be located 16.46 feet from the north front lot line. And what uh, portions of the code are applicable to this request? Uh, it is section 53.073 subsection B to B. Uh, it states when a lot or existing building is within 100 feet of an existing building on one side only, uh, then the front yard setback is the same as the front yard setback of the adjacent building. Uh, and because this is a corner lot, it only has a, on that uh, north side, it only has one uh, adjacent building. And so the uh, proposed structure would be required to meet the same front setback as the uh, house to the west, which is at 30 feet from the front property line. And will you please describe for the Board of Adjustment the current conditions on this property? Uh, yes, according to St. Louis County, the existing house was built in 1910. Um, in 2018, uh, the applicant uh, constructed a swimming pool and patio in the rear yard. And in, tw in 2020, built a, a rear deck on the back of the house. Um, in 2020, um, uh, 2019 and 2020, the applicant uh, purchased the lot, uh, was it previously an independent lot and then from their property to the north uh, and consolidated the properties. Um, uh, so they uh, joined the uh, two lots together uh, in 2020. Uh, that is the existing conditions of the property. Okay, can you explain the uh, variance that's being requested in this application? Uh, sure. So uh, shown above, we have a copy of the applicant's uh, site plan uh, showing a proposed addition on the north side of the house. Uh, the proposed addition is marked in red on the slide. Uh, marked in green is showing the uh, buildable area allowed by zoning that uh, identifies where an addition can be according to the zoning code requirements on this lot. Um, in yellow is marking the area where the uh, swimming pool and deck were built, occupying much of the buildable area of the lot recently. Um, and marked in red is identifying the applicant's requested front setback from um, Summit, Summit Place, uh, which would be 16.46 feet from the north front lot, lot line fronting Summit Place. And do you have anything else in your packet for the board, please? Uh, we, we do have the, the applicant has provided photos and elevations, uh, and I just wanted to uh, represent that the, the applicant's proposed uh, front elevation with the uh, new addition. Okay. Thank you. With the admission of uh, the packet information and the additional photos, the city would have nothing further at this time. Danny, is that just in level with the, the peak of the house now? Um, I, I think the architect could probably explain it better how the new okay. addition will, will inter interact. Sure. So, so Danny, if they had not consolidated this, these lots, you know, it looks like that lot that they, that they added was, uh, was practically unbuildable, correct? Uh, yes, I, I, I don't know if it was completely unbuildable, but it was the, previous lot, you know, did have a very small buildable area. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it was a city owned lot. I don't know uh, at what point if there previously was a home on it that maybe uh, uh, had been demolished. I, I don't know. I don't know the long term history of that lot. So there's an existing pool there now. Uh, there. Uh, yeah, there is a, a swimming pool in the applicant's backyard. Um, and I I don't know for certain whether it in, is uh, extends into what was the former uh, neighboring lot. I, I think it does, but I'm not. I'm not certain. Do you know when the pool was built? Uh, in 2019. And, and uh, 
I can't, I think it was 2019. Well. And, and Summit Place is a dead end street or cul-de-sac if I, my memory serves me correct. Correct, yes. Does anyone else have any questions for Mr. Jindusa at this point in time? When did these homeowners buy the house? I, I don't know. Okay. Um, oh yeah, because the counties changed this, uh, changed this real estate information and it doesn't tell you that. Um, well, actually it looks like it, the most recent sale was in 2003. Thank you. I'm looking on page three of the real estate information. But maybe uh, Mr. Blaze will have that information. Um, I, I do have a question for Mr. Jinduza. Along Summit, you know, just examining the existing buildings. Sure. Would you be able to comment? And I know this is um, how many existing homes actually meet the uh, front yard setback. Um, I a consistent setback along. Well, that sides. is a that that particular stretch of the block is unique in that um, there is a, there is a developer that has uh, demoed a number of homes on that on that street and built new homes in recent years oh. on the west side of uh, that stretch. Um, there was a single home um, that the uh, developer tore down. And built two new homes at a 30-foot setback fronting Summit Place. So the other homes on this block on that stretch of Summit Place are, I believe, both at 30 feet from the from Summit Place. New, but, so new but that's all, is that on is that on the same side of Summit or is on on the other side of Summit? It's on the, it's on the same side of Summit. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions from Mr. Jindusa? Is the petition, uh, who's here tonight for docket 2367? Michael Blaze. Mr. Blaze, as uh, you recall, you're still under oath. Please proceed. Yes. Okay. Um, this evening. <laughs> the, um, this is my hat trick tonight. <laughs> the, um, we, we, again, we have another odd shaped lot. Um, that converges in on the property where we're trying to build a two car garage addition. We're, we're careful not to face the street because we, we can't have a front entry garage. Um, and if we want it attached, we looked at areas on the property even for detached and uh, without variances, even a detached garage is, is unlikely. Um, so, uh, this is also a fairly small house, a little over 1,300 square feet. Uh, the new houses that they built across the street, I believe, are in like the 24, 2,500 square foot range. So this will put this house in more better scale with the houses across the street. Um, the, um, the original house that was torn down next to this actually was a former client too but we um, and i do do have the survey from that and i gave danny also a, a sheet that shows and i can give you both these if you'd like to just kind of show you where that house was it was actually touching the property line um, on on um, on summit um, Danny has a colored one that was in the, that was given to him, I think, early this morning. But the, um, it kind of gives you an idea of what was there and torn down. If you go to the county records and you pull up their maps, you can look back in time. Mm -hmm. And 2014, it was there. And to the next, I think 2016, it was gone. Okay. Uh, so mm -hmm. roughly between 2014, 15, it was torn down. I believe that was all picked up by the city um, in, a, in a tax sale. Um, and, and the whole purpose of, of 
of uh, adding or consolidating these light lots was to to uh, to add on the house and to bring it in a better scale. And uh, so the variance is the, the hardship here is the the shape of the lot. Um, one, if you note on this drawing, um, I have spoken that we have since we turned these in with the owners and they are amenable to moving the addition up to the face of the house where it would, would uh, require less of a variance. Now, I understand, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, Mr. Billings, that you can, uh, you can give us a smaller variance, but not a larger variance, but. That's right. If, if... <clears throat> As a clarity, if the board grants the variance for a certain number of feet, then that is the what they call the law of the case. They can they don't have to use the entire variance. They can use less than that, and that would be just between you and planning and zoning. Okay. You don't have to reapply to the board of adjustment as long as you're using less than the variance of the board if they grant it. Variance. Okay, very good. Right. But that, that would be our intention on, on that second drawing. I just wanted to clarify that if you notice it slid to the front, that addition more than we show on the uh, our original submittal. Is this gonna be a single story structure? Or no, it'll be two story. It's gonna be two story. Yes. So are you, um, I mean, can you tell us a little more about how, how much less of a variance you could, um, I'm sorry, which way are you slide? You're moving the garage further towards Hillside. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And right now we're originally requested 13.54. Feet of a variance, and uh -huh. um, actually, I gave away that sheet and have the addition. But if you look on it, it has another number on that colored. It's I think it's highlighted maybe in pink. Mm, I'm gonna be orange. Or maybe, but I did highlight the numbers of the of the setback. Okay, I'm gonna have to take a look at that. Oh, the 10.32. 10. 10. <laughs> yep. So that would be reduced to 10.32 from 13.54. I think Mr. Billings explained that if you just grant the original variance, we, we could easily do that. And you'd have the flexibility of an adjustment needs to Correct. be made within that limit. Right. That could be done with planning and planning board panels. In short, if they, if they plan to do the garage and bring it to the front of the house, well, they're, they're within the, this variance if requested. So it, the way I'd see it. So. <clears throat> I'm You're sorry. also showing a uh, new frame porch as phase two on this, on on this plan that I'm looking at. Um, that's not part of this variance request if a variance is needed. Correct. Correct. We do not believe that variance will be needed for this porch. So okay. that, that that'll come later. Okay. So, so you're saying that you don't know as we speak, if the garage is going to be up to the front of the house, which would require less of a variance or whether it's going to be where we see it on our. I'll, I'll go ahead and let you speak to the owners. They're here tonight. And I believe they're going to say it's probably going to, it's going to be that smaller variance where we. Well, I guess I'm confused simply because if you know, or they know they're going to bring this garage up to the front of their house and they're only going to need a 10 foot variance. Why don't, why aren't we voting on a 10 foot variance? 
in that this has been published as it has been, they can, again, for less of a variance than originally requested, make a application, a modify their application, amend their application tonight if that is their desire. Again, it can't be any larger than what was published or advertised in right. terms of variance, but if they request a lesser variance, they can present that to the board for its consideration. And the, and the board can approve a lesser variance we just can't approve a greater variance. Right. It has. To, it can't come from the board. It just has to come from the applicant. Okay. And I'll let the homeowner do that just so I don't misspeak. Okay. Just for clarification for the record, we're saying that if we approve this, they don't have to come back to the board to go to a lesser one. They just do right. that with planning. That's why I Correct. Correct. Does anyone else have any questions for Mr. Blaze? If not, um, is there anyone else who'd like to speak for uh, regarding docket 2367? Uh, Jason Wiggins. Thank you. Would you please raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear that the tr a testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you very much. Please uh, proceed. Um, just clarification, the city did not acquire their property after the house was demolished. It was demolished and put on the, uh, the county. I think the county acquired their property and somebody bought it off of the court uh, or, or from, from St. Louis County. Uh, they did not pay the liens to the city of Webster Groves for the demolition of the property um, or the short time that the city of Webster Groves maintained the property. For that rest of that time, my wife and I maintained the property because uh, we got tired of looking at it, frankly. Um, when we were working with uh, Helmut, who was the city attorney at the time, uh, we struggled with the previous owner, the person that bought it off of St. Louis County. She did not want to pay the liens on the property. We were more than willing to pay for the liens on the property. So we, for this ends, um, if we are not granted the variance to put the addition on, it defeats the whole purpose of us paying the city of Webster Groves or me mowing the lawn for five years uh, to do what, what, what the whole end game was. So the whole point in us acquiring this property was to do just exactly what we're requesting to get done. Of course, at the time, I didn't realize that there was a 30 foot offset off of Summit because it's a side yard to us. Now, knowing now, I probably wouldn't have gone through what we went through because it is technically not a buildable property. You can't build anything on that property. So it's the only person it's worth anything to is 360 Hillside. After that house was demolished, the owner that owned it after us uh, found out she couldn't build anything on it and she just basically gave up on the property. Uh, so that's how we ended up with it. Uh, Mr. Blaze indicated when he was speaking that uh, you there'd been some discussion about maybe moving the garage up so it would line up with the front of the house. Is um, can you speak to that? Actually, that was my request. Um, I I I didn't want it. Uh, well, actually, when we first talked about it, it it looked like that's something that we wanted to do, but I didn't like the look of the front of the house. Uh, of the existing house being up further up than than the addition. Uh, if you look at the drawings, the the mock-up that he's got, it's uh it, it, it's more aesthetically. It, it, yeah, if you can find anywhere, any if you can see it on there, it it actually it looks a lot better when it's a flush front. Um, that's the rear. That's all right. It, it, it looks better. And eventually, if we do do the addition with the porch, um, 
it would look less awkward being offset. So this is something that we, we actually want to do okay. is to, to make it flush with the front of the existing house. So, so are you in essence, um, I mean, would you be, are you in essence modifying your request? Uh, so, so rather than a 13.54 variant uh, setback, I mean, yeah, 13.54 13 encroachment into the 30 foot variance, it would be more like 10.54. That's correct. 10.32. Well, 10.32 is what he said, but uh, but I'm you know um, I would hate I would hate to make an error. Um, yeah, Just make sure we're right. You know. Ask for more. Round up to eleven. Any any other questions for Mr. Wiggins? None for me. No. Just a clarification. We're going to vote on this variance eventually tonight, and we're voting on 13.54 feet. Uh, no, I think it's. Uh, the, or are, is, is this, are they, can they change their request? Well, that's what I was asking the Mr. Wiggins if he was changing yeah, his request. The, the applicant can apply for less of a variance okay. tonight, can apply for more. But then if you do, if an applicant does that, this board doesn't have the authority to do it. The applicant does. But then if, if you vote on that, and he, yeah, with the amended mm -hmm. application, it can't be an inch over or else you're going to have to come back to the board. So why, why don't we just call it 11 feet and, and call it a day? Instead of complicating some decimal points, uh, we can't. We can't. We can't do that for you. But if that's your application, that's your uh, amendment, and that's before the board. Eleven feet. Eleven feet is what I'm going to ask for. Okay, Miss. So, Mr. Wiggins, you're asking for eleven feet versus the thirteen point five four feet. That's correct. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Wiggins? Uh, so, is that clear? Is that clear, Mr. Billings, that we're okay with that? It's the application is now amended and it seems to be clear for the record. Okay. My only concern is to make sure he knows what he's doing. Well, we can't get legal. Yeah. yeah. No, no. I'm just saying. He's made a request. Yeah. If, I you, made if a you request. want us to vote, if you are requesting the 11 foot variance in your behalf, be sure that's what you really want. I am requesting. Because it'd be easier for you rather than coming back and forth. So if you get home and say, oh, shucks, I wish I'd have made it 11.5 or something. Yeah, advice. yeah, no, no, well, I, I no, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable you do with what you want to do. I'm comfortable with the with the 11 uh, foot variance. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. That's the application before the board. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak in favor of docket 2367? I see none. Is there anyone who'd like to speak in opposition to docket 2367? Uh, there are none. Okay, so we will close the uh, public portion of, of this docket and move into uh, board discussion. Would anyone like to start the discussion? I see an undue hardship. Uh, I think these are responsible um, citizens that, that take care of their property and they're just simply looking to add on to a spot that uh, really, I don't see any, any hardship against the city. So I would move to approve it. Well, and, and this is an irregularly shaped lot, and it does have two road frontages. And so, uh, so there are some, some practical difficulties related to the, to the shape and the, and the, and the front yards of the lots, a and lot as well. Yeah, there's limited buildable area uh, because of the swimming pool and the, uh, Slope with a lot in the in the setback line. Right. 
Would, it, would someone like to make a motion regarding 2368? I I'm, mean, 2367? I'm, I'm happy to. I would motion that we grant a variance of 11 feet from the minimum required 30 feet north front yard setback in order to construct the addition. Do we have second. a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Tom, would you poll the commission? Marin Millam. Aye. BJ Papello. Aye. John Bercy. Aye. Debbie Salberg. Aye. Tom Walsh, aye. Your variance has been approved. Your, you may see city staff during regular business hours about your next step. Thank you, thank you. Tom, would you please read docket 2368 into the record? Docket item number 2368, a petition submitted by Donna Landerson on behalf of Donna and Michael Robert Oaks for an application for variance from sections 53.203 203A of the Zoning Code of Webster Groves. The applicant is requesting a variance of 40% from the minimum required 40% of existing single family dwellings, which must already have a front entry garage on the subject's property block in order to construct a new front entry garage facing Big Bend Boulevard where 0% of existing single family dwellings have a front entry garage. The property is located at 8964 Big Bend Boulevard within the A4 7500 square foot resident district. Does the city have a case? Yes, Madam Chairman. First, we would move the introduction to evidence what has been previously delivered to the Board of Adjustment in your packets as provided by the city. In addition to the admission of uh, each of those documents, we would present the testimony of Danny Genduza, who has previously been sworn. Would you state your name for the record, please? Uh, my name is Danny Genduza. And you were employed as a planner for the city of Webster Groves, is that correct? Yes, I am. And what are your duties in this position? To administer and execute zoning regulations. And through your uh, work with the city, are you familiar with the property that's located at 8964 Big Ben Boulevard? Yes, I am. That is within the city of Webster Groves, is that correct? Uh, yes, it is. And the zoning for that property? It is zoned A4 7,500 square foot residence district. Would you describe for the board the applicant's request? Uh, yes, the applicant is requesting a variance of 40% from the minimum required 40% of existing single family dwellings, which must already have a front entry garage on the subject properties block in order to construct a new front entry garage facing Big Bend Boulevard, where 0% uh, of the existing single family dwellings have a front entry garage. Would you describe for the record the uh, municipal code section that applies to this request? Uh, it is section 53.203A, which again states that front entry garages are only permitted if 40% or more of the single family dwellings on the block already have front entry garages. And would you describe the existing conditions on this parcel? Uh, yes, according to St. Louis County, the existing house was built in 1920. Um, in 2020 and 2021, a rear addition has been uh, constructed onto the uh, existing house. And would you explain uh, for the board the variances requested by this application? Uh, yes, the applicant is looking to construct a front entry attached carport on uh, the uh, rear, uh, well, on the side of the house with the uh, front entry uh, facing Big Ben Boulevard. Um, looking at the subject properties block, uh, the 21 homes on Big Ben Boulevard, um, zero, zero percent of them actually have front entry garages currently. Uh, nine of them would have to have one in order to allow a new front entry garage. Um, here we have the applicant's preliminary architectural rendering showing the uh, front entry carport uh, towards the uh, uh, towards the back of the house on the side. 
Um, the applicant's carport uh, is identified in red coming off of the uh, side of the addition um, on this slide. Uh, is there any questions I can answer? Yeah, where would the drive be coming in from off Big Bend? Uh, yes, it would kind of go straight uh, straight off of Big Bend uh, down the side of the property. Okay. That's an existing drive. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, they would be utilizing an existing driveway. I think it is a shared driveway, yeah. um, which they probably would need to uh, you know, expand on and, and upgrade to, for the new, new garage. So do the houses in this general area just, uh, do they have side entry garages or they just don't have garages? Um, looking at it, most don't seem to have garages. Some have detached garages going to the backyard, uh, but many seem to uh, simply have a, a driveway or yeah. Uh, simply have a driveway. And so if this garage, if this port cochere, because it's really not even a garage, right? Uh, if this port cochere was not attached to the house, it would not need a variance. Is that correct? Uh, that is correct. Uh, if it was detached uh, and 10 feet away from the house, it would be considered a, just a standard detached garage okay. and would not require a variance. And in order so to make it 10 feet from the house, they'd have to move it quite a bit further back to taking up more of their backyard, correct? Uh, yes, it would. Yes, it would need to be moved back uh, into the backyard. Okay. So you said this is a shared driveway? Correct. Have we had approval or anything from the neighbors? Uh, I, I would let the applicants uh, speak to if they've talked with the neighbors. Um, There's nothing in the file, though. But, but no. And, um, it's 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 not required if, if somebody has a shared driveway uh, we do not require them to get you know sign off or approval from their neighbor right I understand. Um, any other questions for mr jindusa who's here and uh in favor who's here representing docket 2368 I believe the architect is on the line. Uh, Mr. Anderson, are you available? Uh, Mr. I'm, uh, I'm here. Okay. Um, Go ahead. Um, Mr. Anderson, could you please raise your right hand? And uh, do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you very much. Please proceed. Okay, um, I think you pretty well covered all the issues with your, uh, with uh, Mr. Jadusa's statements and whatnot. The, um, the portico share where they put it is basically going to look more like a porch than anything else. Uh, at this point, they're parking pretty haphazardly in this driveway and the driveway is a mess. It has to be redone. Uh, so their plans are to redo the whole driveway for both properties and um, put this portico share on so that they can have um, covered access to their house. What are the, how, how deep, what are the dimensions of the portico share? It's going to be 12 by 22. Okay, so it's really just one car parking, and then this is this is just a covered connection that takes you from the port cochere into the existing addition. Correct. So you can carry your groceries in without getting wet, or carry your kids in without getting wet. Correct. Uh, had they looked at um, at moving at at putting the port cochere, you know bringing the driveway around it at 90 degrees and putting it on the back of the addition? Well, they, they have and they don't, um, it would just completely take up, you know, the access to the backyard and their bedroom um, would look directly into the carport. Okay. Okay. So they're not, you know, it's, it's uh, just not a easy one to get into because of the 
it would be really tight to make all the turns and whatnot. It'd be a three point turn to actually try to get in and out of it also. Um, and making it connected would be extremely difficult at that point. Um, I'm sorry, I should have asked this question of Mr. Jindusa. So there's no side yard setback required? Uh, yes, the port co-share would still be required to meet a six foot setback from the okay. side property okay. line. And, um, and does it appear to meet that six foot side yard setback, uh, Mr. Yeah. Anderson? Yes. Okay. Does anyone have any additional questions for Mr. Anderson? None. None here. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak in favor of docket 2368? There are, there are none. Is there anyone who'd like to speak in opposition to 2368? There are none. Okay, I guess we'll close this for public uh, to the pu for public discussion and move to board discussion. Would anyone like to start this out? I think this is a reasonable request. I'm impressed they're not trying to go request a side yard variance. Um, driving by the property, the houses along this part of Big Bend are all relatively small. And I think as we've mentioned, have no garages at all. Um, so I see this as a logical request. And um, their hardship is certainly in the narrowness of the lot, a shared driveway. And um, the fact that it'd be very difficult to put this in the in the in the backyard beyond the existing addition. It it also appears that there's a bump out on the front of the house, so the the visual from the street is is of the port cochere is limited, and and they show that on the elevations that they've submitted as well. It's certainly not going to be anything that stands out because that's a sort of a busy section of Webster Groves right there by the interstate. And uh, yeah, the house is elevated slightly above Big Bend. Anyone else have any comments? This is just more my curiosity and maybe a question for Mr. Genduza. Does the ordinance in this case apply equally to a porco share as it does a garage? I mean, in some ways you could consider a porco share a porch that you park under. Uh, we, we do staff has interpreted that uh, front entry carports, um, porco share is the same. Uh, falls under the same regulations as the front entry, you know, enclosed garage. Um, so we do interpret it the same. Thank you. Any other comments? Would someone like to make a motion regarding 2368? I'll make a motion to reference docket item 2368 to approve the requested variance of 40% from the minimum required 40% of existing single family dwellings, which must already have a front entry garage on the subject's property block in order to construct a new front entry garage facing Big Bend Boulevard, where 0% of existing single family dwellings have a front entry garage. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you. Any other, um, any other comments? I, if, I think that this, this one's a tough one. I mean, if the poor co-share slid 10 feet 
beyond that north edge of the corner, this wouldn't be an issue. I mean, then it would be a three. carport, technically. Right. <laughs> but detached. I don't see the hardship here. Okay. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Aye. Would you please poll the commission, Tom? Mayor Millam? Nay. B.J. Pomelo? Nay. John Bercy? Nay. Debbie Salberg? Aye. Tom Walsh? Aye. Your application has failed. You may see city staff during regular business hours about your next steps. Thank you very much. Is there any, um, does anyone have any other business? Um, well, I know that it is getting late, but I know that Debbie, you did mention the uh, possibility of discussion uh, a vice chair. Um, Scott Nixon is no longer on the board. He was the vice chair. Um, so you, you may wanna elect, choose a vice chair either this month or, or soon. I'd nominate Tom. I'll do it. <laughs> Second. All in favor. I'm the oldest and longest Tom, in service. Uh, Tom being vice chair, say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Congratulations, Tom, and thank you very now much. You for have made my night. Yes, I'll agree to do it. I'll go down to Deer. I'll go down to Deer Creek Bar and Grill, right? <laughs> I never believe it. Um, any well other done, any Tom. other new business? I mean, any other business that we need to discuss? Um, we are still looking for a, another, um, well, since Scott, Scott was a, a full member of the board, we are looking for a, another full member. I don't know whether John or Marin or Andrew are interested in becoming, you know, full members with the expectation to attend every month. Um, or if you guys have recommendations for, you know, friends or people, you know, to, uh, apply to join the board. Uh, but keep that in mind. I, I'm interested. I, didn't we talk last month? You probably did. Was I'm I being, sorry. Was I being coy about my response? <laughs> probably not. You probably weren't. I just uh, forgot. Okay. Uh, but yeah, we I, we still need more members. We yeah. yeah we did. We would still need another member to uh, be an alternate then. Um, and an alternate way is 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 a good way to sort of slot, sort of get get used to it. Um, Though I don't think John or Randy got to got to get used to it as an alternate. <laughs> I think, well, Randy came on as a full member, but I think that they both had to step in almost immediately. But yeah, if you know anyone who has any interest in serving on the board, um, you know the applications are online, and you know they can, you know, submit it to to the city clerk that way. Um, well, everybody have a nice Thanksgiving, and um, maybe we'll see, maybe we'll see everyone in December at our meeting on December 9th. Uh, and there is, um, and you, you might have gotten invitations, there is going to be a, a small uh, uh, holiday end of the year celebration. Thank you from uh, the city. Um, I think it's going to be at the rec center again, and I think in, in past years they did, you know, you know, a full dinner. I think this year they may be just doing um, some kind of dessert uh, and brief reception. But if you've not received that invitation, you should be soon. I think it's gonna be uh, mid-December. Mid okay, thank you, Danny for, and I hope to, I hope to be back in City Hall at the next meeting. Um, I'm sorry, I just wasn't quite ready this time. Yeah, how are you back. doing? I'm doing much better. Um, I'm still sort of afraid of COVID, even though I am, am fully vaccinated with my with my booster. But um, you know, but I still am using the cane some, especially um, especially over terrain I'm not used to. Right. Do we adjourn? Yes, we're adjourned. Thank we're you adjourned. very much. You guys have a great night. I wasn't trying to touch on chit chat. No, I was just trying to get the chit chat off the record. <laughs> <laughs> You have Thanks, places Debbie. to go and people to see, right? <laughs> yeah.